In this video, we will explain the quantum Zeno effect, which tells us how to effectively stop the time evolution of a quantum system by quickly performing measurements on the system again and again. The name comes from Zeno's arrow paradox, formulated by the Greek philosopher Zeno of Ilea, who lived around 500 BC. He claimed that in order for something to move, it has to change its position. So far, so good. But what if we consider an arrow that flies in the air? At every single point in time, the arrow seems to stand still. It does not change its position. So how can it fly through the air? The quantum version of the story goes like this. Consider a quantum system in the state psi. At t equals zero, we perform a measurement with some operator a, which yields the eigenvalue lambda. After such a measurement, the wave function collapses to the corresponding eigenvector of A, which we call psi lambda. If we leave the system alone, then the wave function will change according to the time-dependent Schrödinger equation, and it might yield a different eigenvalue at a later time. However, we don't give the system enough time to do its time evolution. Instead, we perform another measurement at time t equals epsilon with the same operator A such that even if the wave function evolved a tiny bit, it will probably collapse to psi lambda again. This means we can effectively freeze the quantum system in this state. Now let's go a little deeper into the math of the situation. We start with a state psi lambda at t equals zero. The probability to find the quantum system in the state psi lambda again after some time t is given by the absolute square of this broadcast product where we project the state at a later time onto the state that we want to end up in. The question is now, how does psi of t look like? Well, we can perform a Taylor expansion of psi around the point t equals zero, which looks like this. The state at t equals zero is our psi lambda from before, and the time derivatives of the wave function can be simplified by using the Schrodinger equation. In fact, the nth time derivative of psi can be written as 1 over i h bar to the power of n and then applying the Hamiltonian n times onto the wave function. Therefore, we can simplify our Taylor expansion and write psi of t as psi lambda minus i t over h bar h psi lambda minus t squared over 2 h bar squared h squared psi lambda plus higher order terms. After doing this Taylor expansion, we can now explicitly calculate the probability that the system is still in the initial state psi lambda after some short time epsilon. This calculation is not too difficult and results in 1 minus epsilon squared over h bar squared times the variance of the energy of the system plus higher order terms. If we now repeatedly perform the same measurement, the probability to find the quantum state in the initial state after some finite time t is given by n copies of this probability that we just calculated, where n is the number of times we perform the measurement. After each measurement, we start from psi lambda again, so that's why it's always the same probability. Since epsilon is really small, we can approximate the power of n like this, which yields 1 minus epsilon t over h bar squared times the variance of the energy. If we perform more and more measurements in the same time t, which corresponds to letting n go to infinity and epsilon go to zero while keeping t constant, this probability is equal to one. This means we can keep the system in the initial state psi lambda for any finite time we choose as long as we perform enough measurements. So just like the arrow that wasn't able to move since we looked at it at some instant in time, our quantum system also cannot evolve since we are constantly looking at it by performing measurements. By the way, the quantum Zeno effect has been verified by experiments many times, and one paper even suggests that the quantum Zeno effect is a key mechanism in the magnetoreception of birds, which enables them to see magnetic fields. But that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching.